Algebra 2, set 19, value word problems, and AA means AAA. Okay, so we're just going to start out with an example for these value problems. So, um, Karamagu had 50 nickels and dimes whose value was $4. How many of each kind of coin did he have? So for value problems, you have two different types of equations that you're going to use. And it's always going to be this way. You, the first equation that you're going to use is a number equation, and the second one will be a value equation. So the number refers to the number of coins, and then the value is what each coin is worth. So the first equation is the number of coins and it says that we have 50 nickels and dimes. So we can say nickels plus dimes is 50 because that's how many there are. For the value equation, the value of the nickels and the value of the dimes and the money value comes into play. So each nickel is worth 5 cents, so 0 0.05n plus 0.1 or 0 0.10 dimes equals four dollars. We just leave off the the dollar sign. Okay, another way that you can write this so that you don't have to deal with the decimals is multiply everything by a hundred. So you get 5n plus 10d equals 400. And that's how we'll do all of the problems is we'll just multiply everything by a hundred to start off with. So um, now we have two equations with two unknowns so we can solve. We can solve these equations either by substitution or elimination. So in this case, we'll just solve by substitution. We can say that n is equal to 50 minus d. So we'll take that and plug it in. 5 times 50 minus d, or n, plus 10d equals 400. And then uh, we'll distribute that 5. So 5 times 50 is 250, and 5 times negative d is negative 5d plus 10d equals 400. Now we'll combine like terms. So um, 250, negative 5d plus 10d is 5d, and that is equal to 400. Subtract 250 from both sides gives us 150. So 5d equals 150, so d has to equal 30. Now we'll take that back up to our original equation, n plus d equals 50. So n is going to equal 50 minus 30. Well, so n equals 50 minus d, so n is equal to 50 minus 30, or in other words, n equals 20. So the number of nickels is 20, the number of dimes is 30. We'll do another example. The fishmonger sold codfish for six pence each and mussels for one pence each. If Harriet bought a total of 26 items and spent 86 pence, how many codfish did she buy? So this works for dollars, but it also works for any other kind of money, value, or um, different things like that. So um, we set it up the same way. We have a number equation and a value equation. So we know that she had a total of 26 um, items, the number of mussels and the number of codfish um, equaled 26, and we know that the mussels were one pence each, and we know that the codfish were six pence each, and there was a total of 86 pence. Um, just a side note here, notice that I'm using uh, variables with subscripts, so um, this is what is often used with these types of problems. So um, the variables that define the value or define what, what it represents um, are subscripted. So n is the number, m is muscles. So the number of muscles plus the number of codfish. So we'll go ahead and solve this one. Um, this time we'll solve it by elimination. We'll multiply everything in the top by negative 1. So we get negative n sub m minus n sub c equals negative 26. And then we'll add... So we get 6 minus number of cod is 5, number of cod equals um, 60, divide both sides by 5, and we get the number of cod is 12. Again, we know the number of mussels plus the number of codfish is 26, so um, n sub m plus 12 is 26, so n sub m has to equal 14. 
Um, now we'll talk about triangles. When two angles in one triangle have the same measures as two angles in another triangle, the third angles are equal. We're going to do just a quick proof to prove that this is the case. Um, and again, in the beginning of this uh, lesson, we said AA equals AAA. That is what we're proving here. So we'll start out by saying that um, angle A plus angle B plus angle C equal 180. We know that's it, true because we know that all of the angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. And then in the right, we'll say the same thing. Angle D plus angle E plus angle F are equal to 180 degrees. Now we'll just do some algebra and we will subtract angle A and angle B from both sides. So we have angle C equals 180 minus angle A minus angle B. And then on the right, we're going to do the same thing with angle D and angle E. So we have angle F equals 180 minus angle D minus angle E. Now we know when we're looking at these two triangles that angle A and angle D are the same. So I'm going to substitute on the left where angle A is, I'm going to substitute that with angle D. And I know that angle B is the same as angle E. So I'm going to substitute angle E in for angle B. On the right, I'm going to leave everything the same. And you can see that I have 180 minus angle D minus angle E on both sides. So since angle C is equal to it and angle F is equal to it, then angle C has to be equal to angle F. So that is the short proof. So using that information, we're going to find X and Y. The first thing that is important to do with these problems is to identify what sides go with which sides. So um, the first thing I'm going to notice is that I've got uh, the side that goes with the one tick mark and two tick marks is 5 and it's also X. So 5 goes with X, then I can see that 4 goes with 6 because it's the one that has two tick marks and zero tick marks. So two tick marks and zero tick marks on the right is 6. And then the last one, 7, it goes with Y. So I'm going to use um, scale factor. I know 4 times a scale factor is going to give me 6. So my scale factor is 6 over 4, or 3 halves. And then I just use that scale factor to figure out x and y. 5 times 3 halves is going to give me x. So 15 halves is x. And then 7 times 3 halves gives me y. So 21 halves equals y.